Another issue that came up this week, several different issues, uh, but they all coincide to this, is what happens if I'm filing a reorganization and I have a leased vehicle or I have an apartment lease or I have an equipment lease? That's a great question. And the, the, the reason I say it's a great question is because nowadays a lot of people are leasing vehicles. A lot more people are no more, how, uh, in the, well, they don't own their house, but they're renting and they want to continue renting. But what if you file Chapter 13 and you have a business and your business leases office space? It leases copiers. It leases uh, equipment, maybe corporate, uh, I don't even know, any kind of equipment. Those contracts have to be taken into consideration. So there's two things you can do with a lease. You have to assume it or reject it. And it's pretty simple. If you assume it, then you got to continue paying for it. If you reject it, then it's out the door. Let's say, for example, you file a bankruptcy and you reject the lease car. You're saying, I'm not going to pay for this anymore, creditor. I want you to take it back. They take the car back and you're under no more obligation to pay for that vehicle once you get your discharge and once you pursue, once the, uh, your plan is confirmed in a 13 or you get your discharge in a 7. You're fine. You're protected. Now what happens? If you want to keep something, but you got behind on the payments. So now let's say you're going into Chapter 13. You're saying to the court, I want to reorganize. With this creditor, I have a lease. I want to assume this lease, but I'm four payments behind on my car loan. Well then, the bankruptcy code gets a little stricter. And it says, if you want to, excuse me, if you want to keep this lease car or this equipment, you've got to either bring it current or you've got to make adequate assurances that you're going to bring it current quickly. Now, adequate assurance that you're going to bring it current quickly is a kind of a sliding scale approach. And you have to figure out under your specific uh, bankruptcy court what that adequate assurance is. Personally, I don't like anybody filing bankruptcy at my office, Chapter 13, with a lease who's not current. And the reason why is if you're starting out behind the eight ball at the time you filed the Chapter 13, it may all go downhill from there. And I don't want my, my client's plan of reorganization hinging upon the fact that they're already behind the eight ball. In other words, the goal of a Chapter 13 is to reorganize the person's finances so that they're on the road to recovery. In other words, they've got a plan in place, they've got a repayment plan set up that's gonna, they're going to be able to afford and they're going to be able to protect their assets and it's going to work for them. It may be tight. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying Chapter 13 is a walk in the park. It's not. You're living on a strict budget and you've got to account for every dollar and every penny. But if you complete the plan, you're headed for a, a, a great future because now you've learned over the course of the plan how to deal with the finances, how to, make your, how to stretch your budget, and how to really work within your uh, means to go forward, which is definitely a good learning lesson. It's tight, it's strict, it's tough, but a lot of my clients, an overwhelming number of my clients, finish their Chapter 13 plans and go on to massive success, massive success, which is great. But getting back to the lease vehicles, what happens if you're behind on your lease vehicle and you assume that lease and then ultimately you lose the vehicle because you never caught it up? You want to amend your plan to reject that lease. Once the creditor got its car back, there's no reason for you to assume this lease anymore. You need to reject that lease and walk away from it. So you want to file an amended plan before confirmation, or if it's after confirmation, you want to file a motion to amend the plan, get court permission to go ahead and reject that lease so that you can walk away from it. Some courts say you don't have to do that. In an abundance of caution, I would always do it just in case. This way there's no problem of notice to the creditor that you intended to walk away from this house, you intended to walk away, I'm sorry, the lease, you intended to walk away from the apartment, you intended to walk away from the equipment lease, okay?